Okay. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Dills Alder. Diane Handel. Any questions about anything before we get going? No? Okay, let's get going. Gills Alder. Let's go back and see how we did on some of these here. First one, what do we have here? We got a diene. We recognize the diene. We have a dienophile, which is typically what? An alkene. Now in advanced chemistry, you can have other things, from having uh, other cores and other twos. But it's still going to be a four plus two. Uh, we need to set this up. We need to draw our diene like this in the S cis form, yeah? And we need to draw our dienophile, our alkene, here. Now we can zip this together, 4 plus 2. This has two groups on it. What are these groups? Condensed to these are yeah, ester groups. Right? It's condensed. That's a ethyl ester. Uh, but it's trans, right? Yeah. So we can we can kind of redraw this like this. Alright? They're not always going to be drawn <coughs> in a reaction like this. Now we can zip these together. 4 plus 2 plus 2. F, P orbitals overlapping. And zip it together. Boom, boom, boom. What do we get? 4 plus 2 is? 6. And you get a hexene. Where's the double bond? Right here. These electrons come down, make a pi bond between here. What else do we have? We made that bond. That bond, what's on these two carbons? To ester groups, are they sister trans? Trans. I assume everybody can show some of those trans. It shows a full structure of those ester groups. Um, is that it? What else can we show here? What else is going to be formed? Yeah, plus an antimer. Compound this chiral, the enantiomer will be formed there. Uh, it's not obvious how you get both here because you know, we got talked about the cation there, you take both sides. It's not a cation, but it will be an antimer. Because we never said any, we never said this when we talked about steric chemistry. Uh, it can't be optically active. Nothing here is optically active. If nothing here is optically active, you can't make an optically active product. That's a golden rule of organic chemistry. Is the product optically active? <coughs> Correct. No, it's a racemic mixture. If we only got one enantiomer, it would be, and you'd have a Nobel Prize. Because you'd be the first one to have done this a reaction where nothing was optically active over here, but you made an optically active product. Okay? If you ever do that, let me know. I'm going to join you in the Nobel Prize. Uh, okay, next one. Do we have a diene and a diene? What do we have? I mean, is this an addition reaction? Do we have an alkene with something like HBr or BH3? You've got to recognize this is a Diels Alder. Because right now it's on the Diels Alder handout. But on the final exam, it ain't going to be on the Dills Alder handout. Or later on, you've got to recognize this is a Dills Alder beyond it just being on this handout with Dills Alder written somewhere. Is it a Dills Alder? What else could it be? Is it a substitution reaction, like an SN2? I don't see a leaving group or a traditional nucleophile. No, it ain't an SN2 or SN1. What is it? It's a deal of because I recognize I got a diene and I got something that could be a diene file. Yeah, you got to recognize that. Uh, let's draw this in the S cis form. This over here is trans. That's a trans double bond. It happens cis. That was trans, but this one's cis. It needs to be drawn correctly. 
And then over here we have the triple bond. It's linear. Do we need to do we need to do I draw the cyano up or down? It doesn't matter because one of them is symmetrical. This is symmetrical. Even though it's cis and trans, it's still four carbons and each end carbon has a fiddle. If I flip this over, you're still going to have four carbons with each end carbon having a fiddle. The only time you have to consider what we're going to do next and consider the, where's the partial plus and partial minus is when both of them are non-symmetric. Don't have to do it here. If you think so, we can repeat it. Zip this together. This looks like it's in the way, doesn't it? Well, it's actually not because when these react, they react on faces. This is not really on the side of the board as I'm drawing it. It's really approaching, this triple bond approaches the dying like this. And that film is not in the way. But I, I have to draw it like this on the board. We can just do it, just kind of, okay, it's, it's there. It's not in the way, but this zips here, this zips here, this zips here. What do we get? I think it's going to be a six member green, do you agree? Alkene here, there's your cyclo. Okay, what do we got here? Hold on, we put we get a cyano group here, yeah? We got a cyano group on this carbon. What remains between these two carbons over here? Another bond. Pi bond there, because we only only one of them moved out to make a single bond over there. Pi bond remains. Yeah? What's on this carbon and this carbon? H with phenyl. Are the phenyl, these are tetrahedral now, are the phenyl cis or trans? They're trans. Why are they trans? Because the alkenes have opposite configuration. There we go. Note that that carbon is, is planar. That's an sp2 terminal planar. The, the cyano group is drawn in the plane, not forward or back. All right. Plus what? An enantiomer. Yes, that is a chiral compound. Will be plus an enantiomer, or you're going to win a Nobel Prize because neither one of these is optically active. These are not chiral. Compounds. Your product or product mixture cannot be on the um, What if we flip this over? What if the sand that we have here and we, we, no, we, have, we flip some over? How do we put them together like this? Or do we flip it over and put it together like that? What if we flip it over? Then the sand that would be down, correct? Mm -hmm. I mean, we can draw this still bolded and this one like this. Boom, boom. Boom. Well, what is that? That's just this. That, that is actually the this. So the enantiomer would have the phenyl going back. Right, let's draw this. What does the enantiomer this look like? This would be going back, and this would be coming forward. Sand over here, boom, boom. Okay, this is what you got from the reaction there. That's the two, that's the two enantiomers. If we flipped it over, we would show this, but is that any different than one of these? Okay. See, these are actually the same. Because if you take this and do this, thumb forward, okay, thumb forward here, if I take it and do this, now the thumb is back. Or another way. This is forward. If I do this, this group goes down, but it also goes back. What is this? That's not a sand. Thumb. See? No, that's not the same. No, those two are not the same. So what's the right? Is it the same as 
Yeah, those two are not the same. It's these two are the same. Right? We take this, Femmel's uh, up, but Ford, really I want to flip this way. The bottom fiddle is back. I, I, I can't. The bottom fiddle is back. If I flip this way, the fiddle goes up, but now it's coming forward. Yes. These two are the same. In the end, what I'm trying to tell you is it doesn't matter how this is positioned. Either way, it gets you get the same product. Okay? That's because this over here is actually symmetrical. Even though it's not cis or trans, the symmetry what I'm talking about is it's the four carbons. Each end carbon has the same thing, attached fennel. Uh, what's was that? Chloroform? What was that up here? Kayla? Solvent. Toluene? By the way, that's a better way to show toluene. And one of the other things we looked at, it said TOL. Yeah. Toluene is usually abbreviated phenylmethyl, which is what it is. Phenyl is for benzene, benzene methyl. That's more common for toluene. It's just toluene, yeah. Actually, the deal's over. You did this week. You, no, you didn't use toluene. You used xylene as the reactive solvent. You used toluene when you were trying to crystallize your product. Um, down here, down here. I got a product from this one here. It's the cyclic diene. It's got an oxygen oxygen bridge. This is actually an aromatic compound. You'll learn about aromatics in organic two. Uh, it's called furan. It's aromatic, like benzene is aromatic. It will undergo a Dills Alder reaction. Four plus two is six. So I have a product here. How do we do this? Uh, yep, yeah, very good. There's some stereochemistry there. Half of it we can't. Really address. Uh huh. Just an oxygen bridge. We can just ignore the oxygen between carbons one and four. Yeah. Zip it together. I'll come this way. Cyclohexene. I bond over here. Yeah. Six membered ring. What's on this carbon? The ester group. What else is here? The oxygen bridge between carbons one and four, we can just draw it like that. Put some long pairs on it, make it look official. We can connect that up, try to. This is chiral. It's going to be both R and S, forward and back. You have no relative stereochemistry here that we can address. If there were two groups here, we know that they would be what? Well, we'd have to look at the alkene. There's not two groups there, so there's no sister trans. No sister trans here, we don't have another group here. We also, these two groups, <coughs> well you can sort of say that, this bridge has to be both, either both of or that. Okay? Uh, sometimes you see it drawn sort of like this. It has to be. Okay? I mean, if I've got a bridge and the atom's going up, how does it connect next to the other part? Well, it's going to be like this, and so you end up with just a steeple. Both up, right? Here's a hand bridge from one end to the other. All right? Both of these bonds are up. There's no way I can make a bridge with this up and the other down. 
You see? You either have to be both down or both up. It, you cannot do it. Uh, the question is, how is this compared to this? And that's what we really don't know. We didn't go over that. So ultimately, this would be just about all you can do in terms of stereochemistry. Just understanding that the bridge should be this. The main thing there is just dealing with that bridge. You just do it and put the bridge back, right? How do we deal with that one? Uh, what do we have over here? Over here we have the diene is a cyclic. Uh, do we have to worry about flipping this over? No, this is symmetrical, but they're both symmetrical. You can flip it over if you want, you're going to get the same thing. Cyclohexane, what do we got here? Well, on these two carbons over here, you have that bond and this bond. Are they going to be cis or trans here? Because these carbons are now tetrahedral. Well, they're cis here. This double bond, these groups are cis. They have to be cis because it's a five-membered ring. But they're cis, and so we can draw them the same. But the ring is still there. And it's an oxygen connecting the two carbonyls. But these two carbons now are tetrahedral. When we showed them tetrahedral nature, the two bonds were going to cis, because they're cis in the starting. Uh, is that it? Anything else? Do we need to show anything else here? Yeah, you can show lone pairs. Anything else we need to show? Plus an antimer? Janelle? Plus an antimer? No. Does this compound have an antimer? No, it does not. So you would not say plus an antimer. This, you just made a product that's not chiral. Same plus an antimer is. That's like making paper clips and you say you're going to make two types of paper clips. What? There's only one type. If you're making hands, then I can understand you saying you're going to make maybe only the right hand or left hand, or maybe you're making a mixture. It's not paper clips. The type of paper clip I showed you. It's like making paper clips. There's only one type. You can show both bonds dashed, but guess what? It's the same exact compound. exists in an S cis form. Now so this bond cannot rotate. That bond cannot rotate. It's stuck in a ring. You're not going to get a dill dollar reaction there. And in fact, I see no reaction possible there for anything. No chemistry at all. No reaction down there, right? The diene must be able to be in what form? S cis. Okay. Uh, down below, do we get a retro here? There's your cyclohexene. Which ring is formed in the Bill's alder? Cyclohexene, right? So which ring do you want to break if you reverse the Bill's alder? The cyclohexene. And I told you to start with what when you do your mechanism arrows? Start with the pi bond. Okay? Move the pi bond up. Here, well, something's got to leave that carbon. It can't have another bond. Well, these electrons can come down. 
Well, something's got to leave this carbon. Well, these electrons can move over here and replace what left that carbon. And all that movement gives what? Well, this ring is still intact over here. But what's now between this carbon and this carbon? What does that bond arrow mean right there? Pi bond moved down here. And that actually break, is breaking this bond. Now down here, you're breaking this bond by moving those over. So the, the two is now separated from the four. What's between these two carbons now? You see the pi bond? What, what should be between these two carbons? Just a single bond, because the pi bond moved where? Up there. And there you go. You went back to your diene and your alkene, which is called a dienophile. Because these would come this way. That would be a Diels Alder. The way we, we went was called a retro Diels Alder. And that is very possible. With, with very high heat, these things will kind of do a retro Diels Alder when possible. Why? Because one molecule is going to two, and high heat promotes that. T delta S. Temperature magnifies entropy. And if entropy is good, the more you heat, the more your delta G is going to be favorable. Okay? Putting the energy in breaks the molecule apart, just like if I had dropped a uh, coffee mug right here. Energy breaking it apart. symmetrical. Your alkene has a group only on one carbon. And your diene only has a group on one carbon. To be symmetrical, we need a methoxy also here. Neither starting material is symmetrical. That's when you have to worry about how do you zip them together. Well, how do we zip them together? What do we know about this? Your dienophile electron withdrawing group, what do we know about partial plus or partial minus? Beta carbon is? Beta carbon is partial plus. Yeah? We explain. So we want to find partial minus over here between this carbon or this carbon. One of these is going to bond here in the deals order. Which one of those is partial minus? We have to do resonance to see. There's only one resonance structure here possible. Where, where do you start with resonance in neutral molecules that have a conjugated lone pair? With the lone pair. Because one of these lone pairs is in the pyro. There's a pyro next door. What can we do with this lone pair? Move them here and what? Move this out. And that's all you can do. And that gives. Resonance the structure there. That's it. You can come back. The true structure is a blend. In the blend, which carbon, top or bottom, has some negative charge? Bottom. We see it from our resonance structure. Bottom has partial negative. So how do we zip it together? As drone. We don't have to flip it over. 
this bonds to here. Make sure that bonds to there. And if you just do it like this, this carbon is bonded there, which product do you get? The second one, if you see that. Yes, it's the second one. If you flipped it over, you get the first one. So we don't need to flip it over. We recognize the polarity of our two reactants. Because we understand resonance and how that can affect polarity here. Using the idea of resonance. There's one more to work. You can do that one on your own. Uh, we may look at it if we have time. But let's get back to substitution. 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 We have some ether synthesis. Someone have a synthesis of this ether here? Two, which one are you saying is best? Are you saying that? You're also you're missing the carbon in this case. It's four carbons coming this way. You only got three coming that way. There you only got three three carbons. But which which route is best? Because in the one below, you could show two different routes. You can make the O carbon bond on the right or the O carbon bond on the left, but only one of those routes is going to work. Because of a golden rule. Not a resonance, but a golden rule of substitution reactions. Anybody else have, have something I could do there? Showing one route, you're showing the correct route. Do you understand what the, what the other route would be? Yeah. I, I prefer that you show that so that I can see that you see what's going on. Your arrow is going out of touch with the front. Mm -hmm. You're touching the bottom. Mm -hmm. you're, you're also missing this arrow. No mechanism was required, but you're going to show one. Anybody else? Well, you're missing charge, and that's actually the wrong route because you need to show both both possible routes, and then I'm telling you one of them is wrong. We only do one route here. Okay, we might look, look at that another time. Um, 
over here, number four, carbon ions. We can convert this to the acetylide anion. Yeah, we did that in the end of uh, test two material. Then we can do, come in here with carbon with a tetrachloric carbon with leaving group. Yeah, that's the product going to be. Product would be. Phenol. Phenol is just abbreviation for benzene ring. When a benzene ring is a substituent, it's called a phenol. YL, phenol ring, abbreviate PH. How's that look? Yeah? I mean, you can draw this however you want. It's, it's, it's an alkyne carbon bonded to a tetrahedral carbon, right? Yeah? Good? Is your chemistry good? SN2 comes with inversion, right? Yeah? Just like Big Mac comes with fries. SN2 comes with inversion, yeah? Okay, everybody good? Do it. Uh, is this RS here? Oxygen 1, carbon is 2. What else is on this carbon? An H and a D. What is high priority group? D. It's a higher mass number. It's an isotope with a higher mass number. 3. Where's the H? Forward or back? Back. What is this? S. What is this over here? By the way, just because this ends up being R, it doesn't mean it's inversion. Inversion means inversion, uh, like an umbrella, right? Umbrella effect, yeah? Uh, what's one here? It'd be this, carbon with three other, three other carbon. <coughs> Two, three, where's the H? Well, it's still going back. And what do we got here? R. S to R. Does that convince you it's conversion? It actually, it actually should not though. Just because it went from S to R does not mean it's conversion. Mm -hmm. um. I'm very confused now. No, inversion means that this was this way, something came in and pushed everything the other way, like a number. That's inversion. What I'm telling you is, whenever this happens, it doesn't necessarily have to go from R to S. Because, and this is getting kind of beyond, but it's true, because it all depends on what the new group is. See, in this case, the new group was one, and the thing that left was one. There could be a case where the new group is maybe three or four. In that case, it may end up being S to S, but you still got inversion. Okay? But that's very rare. So, how do we know it's inversion? Because if you look at it, the leaving group is in the plane. It's that way. Really, we say it's backside attack. If the leaving group is this, is, is this way, here we go. It's on the board, and the tosselator is drawn that way. How does, the lead, how does the nucleophile come in? It comes in over here, and picks off the leaving group. But now this bond is where? Straight over from this way. You see how I drew this bond straight over from this way? Now this group is four, this alpha was four. 
Okay? Now the leading group. The other was forward. Okay? Pretend like my finger's forward. When this comes in, but they're kind of, they're kind of, this ethyl's kind of this way a little bit. When this comes in, pushes that off, the ethyl just moves that way, but it's still forward. See? It's now that way, but it's still forward. It is inverted. You just got to understand what inversion is. I drew it inverted. The main thing here, guys, is I want you to see, okay, if you don't pay attention and really know what's going on here, you guys think inversion means going from gold to death. That is a terrible way to look at it. Inversion means more than just that. Did it go from gold to dash? No. But it is inverted. All right? Well, the leaving group came in from the plane. Uh, so, don't fall into the trap that you have to think conversion is always going from gold to dash. Right here, remember the green sheet I gave you and told you it was quite important? A while back, I showed some, these are actually all inversions down here. I didn't call it inversion. If the nucleophile comes in, if the leaving group is forward, how does the nucleophile come in? Back. If the, if the leaving group is back, how does the nucleophile come in? Forward. What if the leaving group is straight up? How does the nucleophile come in? Straight down. These are all inversion, but look. That's bolded and that's bolded. It's just the inversion here. Okay. Uh, elbow forward. Something comes in straight down. What happens? The umbrella goes from here to what? To there. That's inversion, but guess what? The elbow is still forward. That's what we're doing here. It's just pushing this up. See, I didn't call this SN2, I didn't call it inversion, we weren't ready for that type of terminology yet. Okay. So, in the end, Alex, mm -hmm. this was designed to have this discussion. All right. Thanks for the question. I always wait for that question. Yes, it was inverted. Question? Yeah, with the uh, green sheet, can you go back to it for a second? With the ones like down at the bottom, where you have the leading toward, like, I get you that you the leading group forward and then the people look back, but why aren't the other carbons that are connected to it, why aren't they also included? Why, why, why are they what? Why are they not inverted? Like when the nucleophilic when the nucleophile comes, why aren't the when the nucleophile comes, when the leaving group, um, why aren't the carbons that it's connected to, why aren't they like inverted or flipped? Because you have like the nucleophile going back while the leaving group is forward, I get that, but why isn't the other carbons flipped the other way? Wouldn't they be inverted as well? <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to figure out exactly what you're asking and what exactly would be the answer. I'm also drawing these in a certain way. It may not be strictly drawn as if the... You're, you're, I think you're kind of right. Um, we have to get a model in the leading group. Part of the problem is this is really, it looks plainer on the board and it's hard to kind of envision it, but their leaving group, these groups could probably move in real life, but they remain in the same plane. And I'm just not fully showing the 3D exactly. You're, you're trying to get exactly. I'm showing you enough to get the truth. It's going, you're going to get it right and you will always be right. And this is common ways to show it. If the leaving group is back, if this comes in backside, you can just draw it from the back. Keep everything back on the same. <coughs> That's going to always work for you. That will always work for you. And those up there are kind of the easiest. This one down here, though, is where the leaving group is actually straight up. So the nucleophile comes in straight down. And in this case, because the original groups are not in the plane is where you really have to show them 
doing something. Okay. Um, again, you can keep asking there until you get it right. But um, then we can take it further. But with that example, to me, we've taken it further enough that you always can be right if you consider particularly that example. Don't fall in the trap. Hey, my starting material at Leaving Group was bold. I'm just going to put the, the, the uh, uh, product with it dash. No, that is just not right. The other thing, if I can find where we're at, and let's move ahead, is By the way, if you want to show this with that bond dashed, you can show it dashed and be correct. You're going to have to turn the whole thing around, though. I mean, I can redraw R with that bond dashed. Here's the main thing. In this case, your product should be R. Not because it started this, but because R is the correct answer. And if you draw R, you're right. Okay. I can draw R with the dash. I would have to just turn it all around. Um, just like I can draw my hand with the thumb on the left, or I can draw it with the thumb on the right. It's both the right hand. Uh, let's do another one. How about down here? Now down here, the leader group is going back. And so this is a little bit easier. In the product, we can keep the backbone the same. That's funnel. We could just say funnel. And how do we want to draw the cyano group? And there you go. There's your product. And that came with inversion. You can read back the cyano nucleophile, cyanide nucleophile that come in from the front. Everybody see? If you ever can't see, please let me know. Okay? More straightforward. But I want you to be able to do it with something like that up there. Okay, proving mechanism by regiochemistry. Uh, you take this, it looks like a tetrahedrocarbon with a traditional leaving group. Ethanol, which has a lone pair, can be a nucleophile. You look here, it looks like ethanol replaced the leaving group. Oxygen lost an H to maybe go neutral. Looks like maybe the leaving group took an H. Everybody agrees it's a substitution reaction? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. But we also get this product with the nucleophile somehow bonded over here. That's also a substitution product because we lost the bromine and replaced it in, in terms of formula and now it has the O-ethyl. How did we do this? It is substitution. You only know two substitution mechanisms. They're called SN1 and SN2. Which one is this? SN1. SN1. How do you know that? Because SN2 requires a strong nucleophile. Is that strong? No, it's weak. So this is how you have to assess reactions. And there will be more things to assess as we go along. There will be multiple things. We've actually already seen some. We'll clarify as we go along. All right. What's the first step? Well, what's the first step in a SN1? Leaving group just leaves. Yes. Can can this list can this just leave? When it does, what do we have here now? Carbocation. Can a leaving group just up and leave? Yes. It actually can. It's called ionization. I mean, what happens if you put HCl in water, what, what happens? It actually ionizes and the chlorine leaves. And what do you get? H plus and Cl minus. Now, this is really associated with water, but things will ionize. You see, that bromine would love to be minus. These guys love electrons over here. So it's like, hey, carbon, I love you, but I'm out of here. I'm taking the electrons with me. You're fine being a carbocation, and I get to be Br minus. Yay, I'm now super happy. Okay? And by the way, one thing went to two. 
Entropy. Entropy favor. Carbocation. Ionization. Okay, what's next? Well, how do you get the first product? What would happen next? Now the nucleophile. See, this is your rate determining step, typically, of an SM1. Four meter carbocation. We've said all this before. I'm repeating everything. <coughs> now the nucleophile. You see, this is weak. It's not strong enough to come in here and kick off the bromine. Too weak. And too lazy. It doesn't have high electron density. Now if we had O, oh, if we had the minus, that's a different story. That's a good nucleophile. Boom, I'm kicking you off. We don't have that. But once we get a cation, then any nucleophile really can attack it. Weak nucleophiles can attack it, and this comes in here. And what does that get? Well, now the oxygen is bonded there. Let's draw the alkyl group out. One long pair left. There's H on the oxygen. And that's a positive charge. We just made that bond. We didn't magically lose an H. We didn't do anything else. Our arrow shows everything. These electrons make bond to carbon. Carbocation gives this. So how do we get final product? Something takes the H. Can anything around take an H? Yes. Yeah, we can show this. Leave the electrons behind. Standard acid base reaction. We make that plus HBr. And that would be a good old SN1 reaction. And then someone could say, when you first showed SN1, you only had one intermediate. Here you have two. <clears throat> yeah, because after the nucleophile attack, we had to take care of the proton. The main thing is, When we went from leaving group there to leaving group gone, no, when we went from when we did the substitution, bromine there, and now when is something else there? Here. Now something else is there. Did we have an intermediate between when bromine was there and when something else was there? Yes, one intermediate. There it is. But see, we were not through at this point. We had to go further. That, thus, this we also call an intermediate. Okay. So how do you get the second product? What are carbocations prone to doing? Rearranging. Okay. This is sort of A. That, that's this is A going that way. Let's put another arrow here. What can we do? That's a secondary carbocation. Hmm. Can we envision a hydride shift? Mm -hmm. By the way, we need one because over here, we got a carbon with an ethyl and a methyl. Carbon with an ethyl and a methyl. We don't need to move an alkyl. Actually, we need to move an H. And when we do a hydride shift, we get what? We get a tertiary cation. Carbocation is prone to rearranging. Now, how do we get the second product over there? Same thing as first. Ethanol attacks here. Okay, I'm just going to draw kind of a couple of arrows. Something like this means there are multiple steps, but it's the same as we did before. We just attack a different cation. And we get to that. Now, which product do you think is major? Which would you? Second. Why second? Because we said what? Anytime you can rearrange, we're going to say that's going to be the preferred pathway. Okay. So if we had to uh, say which was major product, I would, I would say this one is. Uh, okay. But you may get a mixture that you have to separate maybe by distillation or something, or recrystallization, there's probably liquids. 
If this was SN2, would you get a mixture of regio isomers like this? No, because if it was SN2, nucleophile comes in here and kicks it off. Nucleophile is only going to be bonded here. SN2 doesn't involve a carbocation. Only carbocations give skeletal rearrangements. So the fact that we got regio isomers proves our mechanism was SN1. How else can we prove this mechanism is SN1? Can we use rate data? If it's SN1, what do we expect the rate to be? Some type of constant times what? Times the alkyl bromide times anything else? That's it. Rate determining step. Of the two reactants, which one was involved in the rate determining step or both? the alkyl bromide. Ethanol is, doesn't affect the rate. It's not involved in the rate determining step. You could prove it's SN1 by doing a rate study. You can, you can change the concentration of ethanol or something and see if it affects the rate. It should not. But if it did, that means it ain't SN1. But everything looks like SN1. I mean, all roads lead to SN1 here. Um, what type of nucleophiles react in SN1? SN2 requires strong, and I can also say this, if it is strong, it's going to be SN2. So what type of nucleophiles do SN1? Weak. 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 See, if there's a weak nucleophile, does this indicate that this might be a little slow? Mm -hmm. Right turning step is your slowest step. Mm -hmm. A little slow. If you got a strong nucleophile, it'll just do that chemistry and this kind of won't happen. If there's no strong nucleophile, nothing can happen except this. We'll do more of that. Uh, what if we had stair chemistry here? Same reaction, but what if we included stair chemistry? Look at the top here. What type of steric chemistry would you have here? Well, we got to know the first carbon. Well, let's just redraw them so we can make it clear. What steric chemistry would you expect? <coughs> do you expect any change for the first product? Do you expect any change here for the first product? No, no chemistry took place there. What do you expect over here for the first product? Sometimes you guys just need to 
look and not be worried about drawing because then when you draw it, a lot of times you draw it wrong. Okay. Um, sometimes this may be drawn like this. That's the same. But then over here, you can maybe say something like this. I could have just did that. Did you guys have, would have understood what that means? The left, the left caro carbon is bolded. The one on the right is what? A mixture of both. I just drew them both out. But you may see it's just like that. It's indicating that over there it's a mixture. Okay? What would the second product look like? What type of stereochemistry do we need to show there? This one here? A chiral, no chiral carbons. You don't need to show any stereochemistry over there. There's no stereochemistry to show. There's no RS possibilities. Nothing. As long as you have the right bonds connected, it's fine. Yes, it's tetrahedral. You can show it however you want to. There's nothing to show over there. No Kyle Carpenter, right? Uh, all right. Already answered that. SM1 is largely a carbocation mechanism. And we did carbocations from alkenes. Okay? So it's sort of the same, same type of mechanisms you already know. It's just the carbocation we formed, which looked like this, came from a leaving group leaving. We could have made the same carbocation by reacting this with H plus. Okay? Right? Where are we going to make cation? Top or bottom? Top. The swings to the drag with the H cation. Okay? What we have here is that there's multiple ways to make carbocations. Protonation of an alkene, which we did two weeks ago, plenty, test two. Another way to make carbocations is leaving groups leaving. But at that point, the chemistry becomes very similar. You can do similar things. Okay? SM1 is larger carbocation mechanism. Cause of that, we're not going to spend much time on a lot of details of, of the SM1. Because we saw a lot of the details during test 2 chemistry. Okay? Um, summing it all up. Substrates with leaving group on primary carbon only undergo SN2. Why? Because you don't want to make a primary carbocation unless you wouldn't want to do SN1. Substrates with leaving group on tertiary carbon only go undergo SN1. Why? Because the tertiary carbocation is great. And you never do SN2 on a tertiary halide or tertiary oscillate or tertiary whatever leaving group, a like being most common, right? Substrates from leaving group on secondary carbon can undergo either mechanism. And you will have to decide which. But guess what? Previous example, we had a secondary. And how did we know it was SN1? The nuclear file was weak. There'll be other things that tell you which mechanism you're going to be doing. With strong nucleophiles, reaction will always be bimolecular. That is either SN2 or E2. E2 is on the next handout, elimination. But both of those mean bimolecular. Strong will always be bimolecular. Because strong nucleophiles are bully, bullies. Okay? They're nosy. They're like, oh, leave a group. Here I come. I got to get involved. Okay? Strong will be bimolecular. Here I come. Backside attack. I'm not waiting on you to ionize. Back on attack. With weak nucleophiles, which are lazy, reaction will always be unimolecular. That's SN1 or E1. They're lazy. They won't be involved in a rate-determining step. 
Okay? Lazy. As long as the substrate is secondary or tertiary, because you don't do SN1 on a primary. Or D1. If the substrate is primary, the reaction will have to be bimolecular. But a bimolecular reaction with a, new, with a weak nucleophile will be quite difficult. And pretty much, we've already said it won't happen. So there could be some scenarios that you're just not going to have a reaction. All right? That's summing it up. Uh, here's some homework. You can work a couple of these as we take a two-minute break. And we'll see if there's any questions there. We'll be moving into the next handout. Yeah. 
what's now bonded to this carbon is sort of the iodine, the oxygen, and the methyl. Plus what? What else is formed here? HI. The iodide took an H from the oxygen, so it could go back neutral. Right? See the mechanism? What's it? That's a chiral carbon. Is it R and S? It's going to be racemic because of why? The methanol attacked the carbocation. Not, not a, it didn't kick off the leaving group. It attacked the carbocation. Two steps: ionization and then attack. S N one. Okay. <coughs> Bottom right. S N one. No, we got we got a strong nucleophile. It's a bully. What we say about strong nucleophiles? With strong nucleophiles, we're actually going to always use bi molecular. So what's the answer? No, yeah. Is it SN2? No. No, you don't do SN2 on tertiary halide or tertiary tosylate. So what is this? You actually do get a reaction. It's E2. Okay? It's E2. You can't do SN2 there. Because you don't do okay, tertiary halide. It's not SN1 because you've got a strong nucleophile. They're bullies. They're going to be involved. It's going to be E2. This takes us to the next handout. What is elimination? Okay. There's other questions for you to work down there. I'll send out answer keys to those as soon as, as, soon as possible. Uh, including, if you want to make some meth? <laughs> You can, you can start thinking about a synthesis of meth over there. In organic two, if you have me, we'll we'll make meth from sort of like benzene. Okay. On paper. We're not doing breaking bad a lot. We'll have to. We'll have to. We'll have the GBI up to the lab. It'll be like a nice mechanism down here. Quinine used to treat malaria. Louis Pasteur was doing some chemistry with quinine, treated it with sulfuric acid, and isolated this product. Louis Pasteur. Can you show a mechanism for that reaction? Alright, so mechanism practice. Uh, there's plenty of questions in your workbook and your textbook. Elimination. What is elimination? Well, it's the opposite of addition. So you know how we did addition reactions? You don't need to write this down. We can what? Add HBr to this? What do we get? This might even be in the end up. We get what? That product there? Yes. Final exam is coming soon. That's pretty easy. Pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. Addition? Well, guess what? We can also, that's addition. We can also eliminate. And in this case, what do you eliminate when you go from here to here? Yeah, yeah we eliminate HBr minus HBr. This is going to be the opposite of addition. And addition reactions, especially for us at the introductory level, give what type of product? Alkenes. Great way to make alkenes. Okay? It's the opposite of your addition. But why are we doing it now? Because it's leaving group chemistry. When you come this way, you're starting with something that has a leaving group. So for that reason, elimination goes with substitution. Because they're both leaving group based chemistry. All right? And we already know what types of leaving groups are best. So we don't have to have that discussion again. So a lot of things go together with substitution. Uh, here we go. This is a drug synthesis of Tamiflu. Begins with a Diels-Alder reaction. 
Well, uh, look right here, 63 to 64. What are they doing? That's an iodide. They're eliminating HI, minus HI. Often we can show that, and they're making the double bond here. Okay? Minus HBr, making the double bond. This requires a base, we will see. Here, the base is DBU. I think that's written here. Uh, radical bromination, we'll see a, bit, a little bit later. There's also an elimination down here. It's a little bit touch more uh, involved. You can look at that. There's just a little example. Here we go. Made elimination at what type of carbon? Hydrogen carbon, right? Okay. The leaving group is going to be on the tetrahedral carbon. What are we doing here? We got tetrahedral carbon with a leaving group. We treat this with base, a base. Instead of substitution, replacing the leaving group and having something else in its place, we're eliminating something. being removed, the leaving group is long, gone, but also an H here. Because there's two H's there, but there's only one there now. So essentially we're eliminating HX. That's what we're eliminating. That doesn't mean we're forming HX. This is just sort of just formally what atoms are being eliminated. It's so actually the base takes the H, and the leaving group just sort of leaves and becomes like B or minus or something. Now, in some cases, it could team up with the H and make takes BR. Very generic. Um, beta elimination. Why beta? That actually refers to the H that's being removed. Where the leaving group is, the first carbon is alpha, the next carbon is called beta, and the H that's being removed is on the beta carbon. That's why it's sometimes called beta elimination. When the X is halogen, this is also known as a dehydrohalogenation. D means we're removing it. Losing it. What are we losing? Hydrogen. A hydrogen and a halogen. So it can be called a dehydrohalogenation of this. Right here. Hydrohalogenation. Dehydrohalogenation. Here's a specific example. You take this alkyl bromide, treat it with Tertiary butoxide, tert butoxide, T butoxide, you can get a beta elimination reaction. Now the simplest is the double bond is going to be put in between where the H and the leaving group is. So we end up with double bond there. Okay? Just like over there. The base now has the H, and the leaving group is just sort of there. Now there's got to be a plus there. I mean, maybe there's a potassium here, and then it's going to sit to the bromine over there. Spectator ion. Possible mechanisms for this. Remember how we did possible mechanisms for substitution? Let's first do an E1. The first step of an E1 is the same as the first step of an SN1, which is what? Leaving group leaves. I have a 
be the rate determining step if we were doing this mechanism. We call that ionization. How are you liking this mechanism so far? Olivia, how do you like the mechanism? Ellen? Anybody? I just made a primary carbocation. What do you think? It's not good, right? So let's keep doing it because we're going to illustrate the E1. This is going to be an E1, but it ain't going to be the right mechanism. Because right now, that's, that's bad. You never want to make primary carbon cations unless you absolutely have to. What could be next, though? Hey, we, we made this plus what? There's one of our products, right? OK. Now what? There's two H's here. What can we show next? Uh, actually, a hydride shift would be okay. Because that would give us a secondary. I'm not going to do that, though. Uh, but it is. It's very good. It could be. Uh, in fact, we might come back and do it and see if we can get the same product that way. Uh, because what are carbocations prone to doing? Rearranging. Yes. Never forget that. Yes, always. But what if we take these electrons and come in here and bond to this H? Now these electrons could go somewhere. Where could they go? They fall in here as a pi bond. See the electron movement? What is that arrow giving? Oh, making bond to H? What is that? This product on the end. When these electrons, see it's just taking the H nucleus, right? The H proton. There's two electrons there. They can just move in, and when they move in, what do you get? Okay, that gives everything. Rate determining step was the ionization. We're going to call this second step a fast beta elimination. I was referring to the beta H being taken. That's going to be a fast step compared to the ionization. Ionization is a slow step. That's a great question. So is that um, when the hydrogen is removed by the base, um, is that is that actually is, is it actually form a negative charge and then the but let's do it. Good question. Let's do that. What if instead of that falling in? What if instead we did a tr more traditional acid-base reaction? I reckon I'll redraw it. You may not have, okay? And this took the H and left the electrons behind. What would that give? Long pair here? Yes. This is like our acid, and then what's here? Positive. Okay, well there's your product. That's the same product. If you, want to, if you want to show your product like that, that is the same product. Would that be NAF or can it actually? That no, that's the product. Okay. So why does the oxygen attack but, the H but, but before we go on this, why is that the product? Can you draw a resonance structure of this? Yes. What would you do? Yeah. Move these here? Yeah. What would that do? Yeah. That's a resonance structure. Right? Is that a new compound? That's just resonance. And what, you, what we made here is the product. Which is major though? This one? So how would you rather show this product? Left or right? Let's show the major re resonance structure. But you see the thing? What I did is I sort of, and this is very common here, Instead of just putting the electrons on carbon, I went ahead and just moved them in all in at the same time. And that's how it's commonly done here. But you see, that your would just give resonance structure. And then it's like, well, which is right? Actually, neither one is right. They're both fake. But we typically draw alkenes like on the right. 
You're never going to see anybody drawing out king like this. That's just a little bit high energy. But all we did is move pi electrons. Okay, what was next? So why does the oxygen attack the H instead of the plus? Yeah. Because if it attacked the plus, we would get an alkene. We're doing a mechanism to give the alkene. But how do we make it only attack the H instead of one towards the Could it attack the plus? <laughs> if it did, what would you get? You would get a substitution problem. Because you would have, instead of a BR there, you would have the oxygen there. The question I think you're asking is, could this also do a substitution? It could. I mean, this could just come in here and kick off the bromine. By the way, if it did substitution, would it be SN1 or SN2? SN2, that's a strong nucleophile. At some point, we're going to say, in many cases, you can do either SN2, SN1 or E1 or SN2 or E2. You could do both. We'll have to decide how, when which to do. Right now we're doing a mechanism to give the alkene, as you know. And to give the alkene, we have to take the beta hydrogen and do a fast beta elimination. That gives us the alkene. There's a mechanism for giving those products, but it's the wrong mechanism because we don't want to make the primary cation. But I am showing you a what type of mechanism? E1. Why is it called E1? Well, how many, which, which of these are involved in the rate determining step? Only the alkyl bromide. Thus, we call it an elimination unimolecular, E1. Question? Um, I understand we're still doing E1, and SN1 and E1 would kind of have the same properties as far as attacking that hydrogen because it would be like a tertiary you know, area, if that makes sense. Like it's disubs, not disubs, sorry, secondary versus like a primary kind of idea. So it would want to go towards that hydrogen and take it away, if that makes sense. Like it wouldn't want to do that primary carbocation. If we're using that hydrogen. No. We could easily do, but we could have showed an SN1. If it was SN1, instead of doing a beta elimination and putting the pi bond, yeah. we would have just added a nucleophile. Yeah. That would have given us a substitution product, and we would call it SN1. The fate of this here is two things. Nucleophile could attack here, or you could beta eliminate. Beta elimination gives you the alkene, and overall, you have removed HBr. As you look at the formula, this is missing HBr, and so we call that an elimination of HBr, elimination reaction. But you could attack carbocation. But then we will not have just removed HBr. You would not have removed the H, you would have replaced the Br with something else. And a replacement is called a substitution. E1 and SN1 both involve the carbocation. From there is where it can vary. You can either beta eliminate or you can attack. Get out. Key, we need to beta eliminate. Here we did fast beta elimination. Let's do another mechanism. Let's do an E2. Is there another way we could show these products being formed, but not that way? Could we show any other steps to get these products? Anybody? Well, you can read a little bit. Here we go. Here's an E2. Here's an E2. This takes the H. These electrons move in. When we move them in, let's move them in to make bond. Okay, fully move them in. And when that moves in, let's kick that off. What does all that get? There you go. There you go. All together now. All one step. All that was concerted. A concerted beta elimination with no carbocation ever formed. What does the first arrow give? Base taking the H. Gives that product there, right? What does the next arrow mean? Electrons moving in to make pi bond between carbons? What does that arrow mean? Bromine leaving, taking on another long pair. There you go. All that happening at once. It's just a transition state. All at the same time. Okay? We can graph these reaction coordinate diagrams. How many intermediates do we have above? One. Carbocation? Down here? It's just a transition state. It's going from here to here and just 
got an activation energy. This is a transition state. Okay, I'm doing it down here, A to B. I'm not going to completely make this official. Yeah, it's just a, it's just a transition state where all that's happening. You no know, intermediate. Um, okay, which is the rate determining step? That step. It's only one step. How many, which of these are involved in that step? Got to be both. So is it unimolecular or bimolecular? Two. It's called E2. We did an elimination of bimolecular. This is an E2 mechanism. Which one is the mechanism for this model of reaction? E2. This is your mechanism. Because we never do a break the primary cation. Could instead this oxygen attack this carbon and kick off the bromines? Theoretically, but that would be an SN2. Instead of the nucleophile attacking the carbon and kicking off the leaving group, it acts as a base and it takes a beta hydrogen, and those electrons come in and then the leaving groups expel. This is an elimination. There's actually a third mechanism we could show. Does anybody have another pathway to get to these problems? Another pathway. I'm going to show you another pathway, but then we're going to never show it again. <laughs> so the reason I'm showing it to you is so you don't, you don't do this pathway. Sometimes students will try to do this, and no, this is neither E1 nor E2. Another pathway. Now let's make sure this is different. What if this just takes the H and leaves these behind, sort of like was mentioned earlier? But what if we do this first? That gives what? That plus what? Plus that? I'm not going to redraw it. Plus that, right? Took the H. And what did I make in this? Pathway. A carbanion. Did we make a carbanion in E1 or E2? No. This is, an, this is a third different group. Carbanion. Now how do we get to the end? Now these electrons can move in and kick that off. How about that? What does that get? There you go. That's a third possible group. That's neither E1 or E2. E1 involves making a carbocation just like SN1. E2 is concerted all at the same time. This is where you make a carbanion. This would be the rate determining step. This would be fast in this mechanism. Such a mechanism is known, but not in this class and not for this type of reaction right here. Let me ask you a question. Which step does the leaving group leave here? Rate determining or fast? Fast. Fast. See, it's leaving in the fast step. Which step does it leave in a E1? Previous page. Rate determining step. Which step does it leave in the E2? Rate determining step, because there's only one step. It better be leaving in the, in the, in the it better be the rate. This is an example of the leaving group leaving in a fast step. You see that? This is assessing the mechanism. Okay, we're never going to show this again. This is not E1 or E2. We never actually make a carbanion, which you suggested we do, okay? We don't actually do that. It's, you're never going to show a minus carbanion over here. Unless you want to do that resin structure thing, which we had, but I probably wouldn't do that. Keep you out of trouble. Uh, have a good weekend, guys. Make use of your Friday afternoon, yeah?
group, group lab due on Monday.